we're going to lay a little extreme history on you tonight. Okay, hit it, Steve. <laughs> We started the Extreme History Project because history isn't pretty. And the only way we are going to come to terms and learn from our past is to know, talk about, and understand our shared history. I'm Marcia Fulton, a recovering adjunct professor of art history and anthropology, and I was looking for ways of making history and my work meaningful and relevant to humanity. And I am Crystal Alegria. Educating the public about history and archaeology is definitely my passion. And we're excited to join forces with PK to bring you some extreme history tonight. When we, when we started Extreme History, we felt it needed to be an activist organization. And that's somewhat unheard of in our historical circles. But here we are, historical activists, working to protect, preserve, and reveal history. As historical activists, instead of a mission statement, we wrote a manifesto and included a truth agenda, which states, we're dedicated to eradicating political and social agendas from traditional narratives and pursuing a more balanced and honest expression of the past. We pursue this in many ways, including oral history interviews, such as this interview with Mr. Grant Bulltail of the Crow Tribe. This piece of ground and the people who once lived on it is what started the Extreme History Project. This is where the first Crow Indian Agency was located from 1869 to 1875. It was called Fort Parker, or the Mission Agency, and was located about 10 miles east of present-day Livingston. This place brought Crystal and I together. It's where we came to understand that history is vitally important and can influence how we understand the society we live in today. And while validating also the experiences of silenced communities, this is where we learned that we need to know and respect the full history of the places and the people that once occupied the land where we live. We've been doing research in Fort Parker for eight years now, and we've had the opportunity to meet with many wonderful people with connections to the past, such as these fine ladies, elders of the Crow tribe, who came and spoke their language on their ancestral land. Our, our biggest accomplishment to date is helping the Archaeological Conserv Conservancy um, to purchase the land where Fort Parker was located. Why don't we just do that? <laughs> This land will never be developed or changed. It will be protected and preserved in perpetuity. Yay, we're excited Yay. about that. Woo, woo. Yes. Besides our work with Fort Parker, we also do a lecture series at the Museum of the Rockies. We wanted a way to convey information about history and archaeology to all of you in an easily accessible way. A lecture series seemed to fit the bill. We're here, heading into our sixth season this January, and you can catch our next lecture on September 21st, which will be on Heritage Orchards. All right, another way we bring history to the public is through historic walking tours, which I'm sure many of you have taken. History on the ground in the place where it happened is the best way to learn and understand the history of a community. We've been doing historic walking tours for four seasons here in Bozeman. We were also interested in exploring innovative ways of presenting research to the public. So we've done theatrical productions, including a play called Who Killed John Bozeman, and a theatrical reading called Fort Parker in Their Own Words. By presenting history in live action media, it brings the past into the present, making history more tangible and immediate to the viewer. We also do projects that help document Montana's very unique history. One of our current projects is to assess and the unmarked and unmarked graves at Nevada City Cemetery, which is located near historic Virginia City. We love to hang out in historic cemeteries, huh, Marcia? We sure do. <laughs> We've never met a cemetery we didn't love. We sure have it. The goal of every project or program is to share the past with the public in new and engaging ways, to open doors to the past that were previously closed, and to educate, and edu to educate the next generation of the stewards of our future. You've heard the saying, it's important to know your history so you don't repeat it. And in our current political climate, this is true now more than ever. We need to learn, understand, analyze, and interpret our history to be better informed citizens to help build a future that works for everyone. 
As a nation, we're currently trying to come to terms with our history, including the historical trauma resulting from Native American genocide and African American enslavement. In these confrontations, history and historians can offer important context and information to better inform the debate. We work to add context to these discussions here in Montana and nationally, whether it's Confederate flags, monuments, neo-Nazism, or climate change, historians have valuable insight into the processes that created the contentious issues and can help unravel the complexities of the past. Even here in Montana, we are working through the history, trying to decide as a community what we want represented in our public parks and spaces. These histories are uncomfortable, but it's time to have conversations about the hard history. It's not gonna go away if we ignore it. People often ask us why we call the organization Extreme History. The day we dreamed this up, we were sitting on Crystal's back porch, and we were thinking about a name that represented the kind of history we wanted to tell. What we wanted to explore wasn't traditional history. It was much deeper and richer. It was scary and edgy. It was like the relationship between skiing and extreme skiing. <laughs> Right. We wanted this organization to tell historical truths, to expand our traditional historical narrative. We didn't want to do ho-hum history. We wanted to do radical history that splayed open the historical record so the real history would come spilling out. So the name, yeah, woohoo! all right. <laughs> so the name Extreme History just fit. We don't do this work alone, it takes many hands. We have many colleagues, board members, volunteers, students, and friends, and family. Many who are doing presentations tonight, thanks guys. Uh, without them, we couldn't do what we do. So we encourage you to go out, learn and experience some extreme history. Learn about the ground you live on and the people who lived there before you. Listen to their stories and speak your truth. Thank you.